Привет, comrades! Alpern here, and on today's menu we have the Soviet Meta Build Order Guide. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. This build order analysis is mainly focused around 1v1s, as in team games there are way too many variables to really discuss anything in a comprehensible manner. Of course today we are taking a look at the Soviets, but we have covered most of the other factions already, so do check those out. Also make sure that you subscribe to not miss out on future guides, such as uh, off-meta build orders or commander tier lists. Soviets has a clear opening divide between tier 0 units such as conscripts and tier 1 units such as penals. In this guide we are for the sake of scope focusing on conscript openers as tier 1 openers are vastly different and deserves a video on its own. Conscript openings is also vastly more common than tier 1 as they scale better into late game with more diverse options as you get there. In 1v1s for Soviets, the clear majority of the games are started off by a second combat engineer, followed up by three conscripts. You can mix this order a bit, say starting with the three conscripts then get the engineer, depending on your personal preference. The difference here of course being whether you have an extra sandbag or some extra wire before the opening engagements. This opening composition is, as you may notice, very weak compared to some of the Axis counterparts, and hence as Soviets you have to be quite cautious with this opening until you get your first power spikes. The first power spike is generally going to be the flamethrower. I would advise everyone that are a bit more inexperienced to simply avoid engagements until you hit the flamethrower as that exponentially increases your power together with the merge ability of the conscripts. And you get your main opening strength from the flamethrower. This can be done by using sandbags and making sure you always outgun your opponent in the opening engagement. An alternative to this is instantly queuing four conscripts with the airborne doctrine. The goal here is to spend your munitions on SVTs to equip your four conscripts with and later on getting that second combat engineer and an airdrop Dushka. This is stronger in the early game if you can manage your conscript engagements well until the SVTs drop. Following this up, generally you get healing into teching for a light vehicle. Most commonly, the teching path is tier 2 to obtain later access to the Maxim and the SIS gun, then straight to tier 3 and either an M5 quad or a T70. Both of these vehicles are good and both have their own weaknesses and strengths. The M5 costs 40 less fuel than the T70, matching the 2 to 2, which means you can have a faster medium vehicle. However, it does cost 90 munitions compared to the T70 and offers slightly weaker wipe potential and surv survivability. The T70 is a powerhouse for sure, but the 70 fuel can actually delay your medium for quite a bit. It's also around this time you usually end up reaching two command points, which unlocks your best call-ins from commanders, such as the unit's guard rifles or dushkas. These are really common because of their strength. The three conscripts and two engineers is to keep an early spot open for such a unit. You can get this unit before your light vehicle depending on your fuel income and your manpower float, but usually I try to prioritize the vehicle timing and only end up getting these before if I'm really struggling to afford the vehicle. Anti-tank snares and molotovs are usually teched after getting the light vehicle in order to get a proper timing on that vehicle. Sometimes they can be teched earlier if you are under heavy pressure of say a 2-2-3, but those are rare circumstances. After this a SIS gun is the most common follow up since it helps with any light vehicles as well as the SIS barrage being able to remove pesky machine gun positions. A dishonorable mention here for the 120mm in the guards motor doctrine since if you're fighting Ost here, a guard squad and a light vehicle is usually enough to keep the 2-2-2 at bay and the 120mm simply has more impact than the SIS gun versus Ostier support weapon heavy compositions. This is then usually followed by a fast tier 4 as the strong 7 man upgrade gets unlocked as well as to make sure you get fast mid game vehicle. The vehicle of choice here can impact your build a bit as well uh, as a KV-1 is significantly more expensive than a T-34-76 and thus you can easily afford an extra unit before taking the tier 4. This can be dependent on your situation, but I would say a Maxim or a second SIS are both valid options, 
as well as a mortar or guards rifle. As for tier 4 vehicles, Soviets have some of the best ones in the game. The first go-to vehicle is always a generalist of some kind, such as the M4C, T3476, KV-1 or the T3485. The T3485 is the most common out of these, as it's really strong for its price tag, surviving 4 shots compared to any of the other mediums. Further follow-ups are usually a second SIS gun, then another duplicate of whatever vehicle you first built, with later variations depending on your opponent's composition. If you're doing well and your opponent is relying on support weapons, a Katusha can be used. The SU-85 is also amazing versus heavier vehicles, such as a Tiger or a Panther, or if you're really far behind. The Soviet late game composition that you usually end up with is 2 combat engineers, 3 conscripts, 2 SIS guns, a Dushka or a guard squad. Keeping the T-70 alive for vision or the M5 quad for anti-air and suppression is also very nice. As for vehicles, you usually end up either spamming the T-3476 or the T-3485s, that's what your composition mostly is. If you go KV-1 for instance, it can also be well supported by a Katusha and an SU-85 or a T-3476 covering the rear flank. As for munitions, your priority is almost always that first flamethrower, followed up by mines and tripwires. A sweeper should be prioritized once you're queuing your light vehicle to make sure you don't drive on any tellers. Mines is otherwise very important for the Soviets and a strong late game investment. DP-28s for guard rifles should be prioritized over any other weapon upgrades, though 7 men are almost equally important. Other than that, I always recommend to float 50 to 60 munitions at all times to punish reckless vehicle behavior with snares. But Soviet conscripts are also extremely versatile with munitions, using aura to sprint sandbags and throwing molotovs. Once you hit Vet 1, you can also plant flares with the conscripts. And apart from that, floating some munitions can also be useful to make sure that you can afford to sis barrage annoying machine gun positions. Now I plan to make a lot of these sort of guides in the future, and especially for Co3, so if you plan to pre-order Co3, please do use the link down below in the description and use code ELPEN on checkout. This helps me directly by giving me a cut of the purchase. Thank you and thank you for watching.